Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, a fire breaks out at an apartment complex north of downtown. We have details coming up. And Russia now demanding that Ukrainians surrender in exchange for safe passage out of town. We're going to have the latest on Ukraine's angry rejection of that offer. Outside with Lycam, while you were sleeping, showers have moved into the area. It could cause problems for your morning commute. Of course, we are on alert for the potential for some severe weather. We'll talk about that and all the uh, possibilities coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, March 21st. We hope you had a great weekend. Yeah, we hope you did. The weather definitely worked out and uh, very different this morning with the rain. It is, and it's mostly light rain right now. Mike Osterhays joins us now with more on what could happen throughout the day and especially into tonight. Yeah, it's the, it's the tale of two different uh Two different days almost. Mm -hmm. It's this morning where it's just, yeah, the light stuff out there. We got some fog, um, maybe a, a rumble of thunder here or there is possible this morning. And then later on this afternoon is when things are potentially going to get going. So this is what is going to greet you when you uh, head outside this morning. There is some light rain. The roads are wet. As you can see, it looks a little foggy off there in the distance. And this was almost nothing this morning. When I came into work, uh, it was this very, very fine mist. And now it has started to continue to obviously develop. Everything is moving in here from the uh, southeast and rain has been falling at some point or another in and around town. So again, just assume all of the roads are pretty much on the wet side. We've got a few and all this is on the, is just lighter rain and just enough uh, as of right now to make the roads nice and slippery because it hasn't washed off all the oil and dirt and everything off the roads as of yet. And then further off to the east and more of this rain will continue to work its way in here from the coastal plain as the humidity continues to pump on in. We had some dry air yesterday and now it's very humid. Now jumping into what's going to be happening later on today. We do have a risk and here in town it is a two on the scale of one to five lesser risk out in portions of the hill country and then we'll have scattered and off to the east and to the northeast more numerous potentially severe storms, high winds and large hail are the biggest threats with this and then there's also going to be an isolated tornado or at least the possibility of that especially further off to the east the bullseye of this is further off to the northeast but we're going to be under the gun pretty much starting after school today um, it's going to be the window when talking about even yesterday it was about 4 to 8 p.m. which is pretty good as of right now that window for the the strongest storms then on top of that and that's pretty much going to be along the I-35 corridor east of there windy and dry so red flag warnings going to affect for uh, western part of our area later on this afternoon back to this morning we do have fog to deal with it is fairly thick in a lot of places three miles out there at the airport and on the west side two and a quarter two and a half Casterville. This is going to be going up and down throughout the morning, as is uh, usually the case. Yesterday, we started in the low 40s. We're starting in the 50s and low 60s today, and a ton of humidity out there. Oak is now starting to show up a lot more. Same thing with ash and throughout the day. Again, light jacket this morning. You need a rain jacket. You need an umbrella. Mist and fog, some light showers around the area. And then later on this afternoon, we'll, we will get a break in the action midday. Then it's going to start to fire up again. So after school, we'll have mostly cloudy skies, one or two of those storms. And then it's going to be in toward dinner time where some of those storms may be on the severe side. What's in store after today? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Breaking news overnight. A China Eastern Airlines jet carrying at least 130 people has crashed in the mountains of southern China. That's according to China's Civil Aviation Administration. The Boeing 737 en route from the southwestern city of Kunming to Guangzhou when it lost contact. On board were at least 120 passengers and nine crew. Local media says rescue teams are en route to the scene where fire is visible on the ground. Official number of casualties is not known at this time. We'll do our best to keep you updated. And here at home, the San Antonio Fire Department says a fire at an apartment complex north of downtown left one resident displaced and one apartment heavily damaged. The call came in just after 8 p.m. last night in the 100 block of West Jones Avenue. More than 30 fire units were initially dispatched to that scene, and all the complex residents had to evacuate that building as crews battled the flames. Now, fire officials say it started on an exterior wall of the apartment complex before traveling up to the third floor. A short time later, fire crews were able to to get it under control and extinguish the flames. No injuries were reported. Our officials are still investigating the cause.
Turning now to the war in Ukraine, you're looking at a live picture of the capital of Kyiv, where things look peaceful at 1134 in the morning, but a massive new explosion went off overnight. In the southern part of the country, a new moment of defiance as a deadline for surrender came and went. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has more. Overnight, a city under siege taking a stand. Leaders in Mariupol have rejected Russia's demand to surrender, defying the 4 a.m. deadline to turn the city over to Russian troops. As the invasion stretches into day 26, Russia is upping its attacks against non-military targets. In Kyiv, Ukrainian officials say this missile strike destroyed a shopping mall, killing at least one person. While back in Mariupol, local officials say an airstrike destroyed a school where hundreds of people had been sheltering. We've seen um, deliberate targeting of cities and towns uh, and civilians uh, throughout in the last uh, several weeks. I believe that he's taking these kinds of steps because his campaign is stalled. This local park has been turned into a temporary cemetery as people bury their friends and neighbors. President Zelensky Sunday said he's willing to speak to Vladimir Putin about how to end this war. I think that we have to use any format, any chance in order to have the possibility of negotiating, the possibility of talking to Putin. But if these attempts fail, that would mean that, that this is a third world war. President Biden travels to Europe to meet with NATO leaders Thursday. From there, he'll go to Poland to discuss the growing humanitarian crisis. According to the UN, at least 10 million people have been forced out of their homes, a quarter of the population. And now, Ukrainian officials accuse Russia of forcibly deporting people. To force people from Ukraine to go into Russia is absolutely unacceptable, it's unconscionable, uh, and again, it's something we need to, to confirm, uh, but I don't put Put it past uh, the Russians. One issue up for discussion when President Biden travels to Europe this week is Poland's proposal for a NATO peacekeeping force in Ukraine, an idea critics say could be dangerously provocative. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Closer to home over the weekend, firefighters here in Texas made progress against a massive complex of wildfires that have killed one person and burned at least 50 homes. The Texas A&M Forest Service says the wildfires near Eastland are at least 25 percent contained as lower humidity improved firefighting conditions. That area is about 120 miles west of Dallas. However, the potential for gusty winds has raised the wildfire threat to critical levels. Officials warned that fires could also affect parts of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska, and warned of an extreme fire risk in those states. Today, the Senate Judiciary Committee is set to begin its confirmation hearings for Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. The 51-year-old federal judge would be the first black woman on the Supreme Court. Barring a significant misstep by Jackson, Democrats intend to wrap up her confirmation before Easter. Jackson is expected to present an opening statement later this afternoon, then answer questions from the committee's 11 Democrats and 11 Republicans over the next two days. It's not yet clear if Republicans will go after Jackson, given that her confirmation would not alter the court's 6-3 to three conservative majority. The United States condemning attacks on Saudi Arabian infrastructure. Saudi state-run media says rebels from Yemen unleashed a barrage of drone and missile strikes on Saudi Arabia over the weekend that targeted a liquefied natural gas plant, oil facility, and power station. The Saudi-led military coalition said the attacks did not cause casualties. However, the attacks marked the latest escalation in cross-border attacks on Saudi Arabia as peace talks remain stalls. Right now, 438, about 61 degrees. Coming up next, the Spurs taking on the Golden State Warriors without Steph Curry last night. We're going to have some highlights. Checking traffic right now. We had some overnight accidents that were slow to clear. Right now, we're looking at uh, significant rainfall out there at 10 and Probant. You are going to want to slow down and leave space between you and other drivers this morning. Speaking of the roads, taking a look outside with live cam. Those roads are slick this morning. It Take extra caution and leave a little earlier if you can. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. 442. Last night, our Spurs needed to take advantage of the fact the Warriors lost Steph Curry for the rest of the regular season it's after he sprained his left foot and lost to the Celtics. San Antonio took control early, opening possession. Josh Primo fired Jaka Pertle and driving for the slam. Uh, quick 2-0 lead. A few plays later, uh, Primo finds Vassell for the corner three. Spurs open a 6-0 run. San Antonio led 36-22 at the end of the first on the strength of about 60% shooting. But the Warriors cut it to a 63-57 at the half. Spurs lead kept going, though. Late in the game, Kelvin Johnson was able to score off a rebound of a missed free throw with three-tenths of a second left to give the Spurs a 110-108 victory over the Warriors. Jakob Pertl made the first of two free throws to... Uh, at 108 with to I believe that's to tie it at 108 with 2.4 seconds left. He missed the second off the back iron, but Johnson grabbed the rebound and converted the winner. Josh Richardson led the Spurs with 25. DeJounte Murray had 19. Warriors held San Antonio to 38% shooting, but they committed 15 turnovers that the Spurs converted into 22 points. I had faith he was gonna make it, but I was like, just go for it. Even even without a doubt, just go for it. And, you know, I crashed in, and I think somebody tipped it. And I just, you know, I just grabbed it and turned around and, and put it up. <laughs> I was like, man, the main thing when I grabbed it, I was just like, I just want to get it off in time. You know, get it off in time, give me a chance to, you know, win. So, you know, I just crashed the glass and, you know, everything else just took care of itself. Well, it's the second time he's done that. You know, he won a game for us here recently uh, with an offensive rebound on the free throw. So uh, he gets a lot of credit for that. But, you know, we, we played – well enough to win. You know, we have a lot of things we still got to learn, uh, but they don't give in. And that's the best part of them. They great, great character, and they keep playing. Up next, the Spurs travel to Portland to take on the Trailblazers. Tip off set for nine o'clock Wednesday. The team then travels on to New Orleans on Saturday. San Antonio FC played their first road game this season this weekend, and they got a win, which is great compared to last season. They didn't get a road win until July, so starting at 2-0 and is awesome. A way to kick off the 22 campaign. Uh, Saturday afternoon, San Antonio was playing at the LA Galaxy 2. SAFC got on the board when David Loera scored his first goal of the season, knocking the ball in over the keeper at the 10-minute mark. LA would score in the 30th minute to tie this game at one by halftime. That was the first goal allowed by goalkeeper Christian Bonilla. 53rd minute, San Antonio pulls away for good after a red card issued on LA's Mitchell Taintor scored his first goal of the season. San Antonio wins 2-1, marking the second time in team history the ball club starts the season at 2-0. San Antonio is one of four teams in the Western Conference to open the season at 2-0. Yeah, incredibly proud of Mitchell. We worked on set pieces all week. Um, you know, he, he, he finished off uh, a great delivery. Um, to be fair, on the set pieces, probably could have had a couple more. Uh, but we are proud. He, he got one and, and became the difference maker for tonight. I didn't think we played our best last week, but we squeaked out a win. And uh, we all challenged each other to, to be better on the ball and to, to practice what we preach in training. And I think everyone did that. And it, it was great, great coming here and getting three points. And I think everyone battled. Everyone played well. Um, so there was a lot of good takeaways and obviously some things to work on, but uh, I'm really proud of the guys. Next, SAFC travels to take on RGV FC on Sunday at 6.30 down in Rio Grande Valley. And that's a look at morning sports. All right, time now, 445 and 61 degrees for now. Coming up next, how the FAA is now studying some recent close calls at some busy U.S. airports and how it's hoping to prevent any potential mid-air collisions. And welcome back. It's 448. The FAA is taking a closer look into recent close calls at some busy airports across the country. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an important travel alert for every spring break flyer. With more than 6 million people traveling through U.S. airports this weekend alone, all eyes on safety in the skies. The FAA now studying recent close calls at some busy U.S. airports, hoping to prevent any potential mid-air collisions. Like this one last fall in Reno. One plane about to take off, another about to land. 2666, you have a departing satellite in sight? Uh, no, it's just barely under the nose, Delta 2666. The Wall Street Journal obtaining documents showing escalating mid-air risks last year near Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport and Hollywood Burbank Airport. We don't wait for something to break before we start to fix it. And we'll have much more on what authorities are doing to keep flyers safe coming up at 7 a.m. 
with your GMA First Look. I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide this morning. Of course, those roads are slick. There's a look at I-10 at Proband and I-35 in Top Royal. I saw flashing lights at another camera earlier. I did too, Steph. And I, there I, it is. There is uh, Highway 281 at San Pedro. Okay, I'm looking right now. 281, San Pedro. Uh, yeah, we do have an accident uh, working right now, it looks like. So... At I-10 at Wurzbach as well. One of the well. trans guide cameras, yeah. All right, All right. Stephen's uh, off today, so it's going to be team coverage here <laughs> on the morning show to keep you updated on what could be a very messy morning commute. A lot of folks are back from spring break this week. Yes, they'll be traveling, and they'll be traveling on wet roads, right, Mike? Yeah, and in this case, weather and traffic are, are just going hand in hand mm -hmm. because we do have those wet roads around the area this morning. Also, it looks like the fog, um, the cloud layer is very low. We've got the, the rain out there, and that's reducing visibility. Three miles officially out there at the airport, thicker further off to the West Port SA over in toward Castroville. Then New Braunfels has nothing, but this batch we're going to have to definitely keep an eye on. Uh, the wind wind is up slightly, so that tends to help out as far as no fog formation, but you just got to be on the lookout for that. All right, plenty of light rain. Again, there was almost nothing on the map earlier this morning. Everything is working its way from basically south to north, and again, it is, if it's not raining where you are right now, and it may be very, very fine mist that's too light to be picked up on radar, and that's what I ran into earlier this morning. I mean, it was just hardly even, I think, qualified as mist because it was so light. But now we do have those few showers around the area. Uh, going up to 81, 10 off to the east, all of the major highways around here. And this is just the, the picture right now. Like I said, it's been raining. It's been kind of off and on throughout the morning hours and will continue. Obviously, the majority of this is off to the east. And this is where the majority of heavier thunderstorms are going to be today, eastern half of our viewing area. So as far as what's going to be happening this morning, pretty much what you see right now is what we get. Temperatures are going to be staying very steady. We'll have a few of these light showers around the area, maybe a rumble of thunder or two and then we go into mid morning hours uh, we'll get up into the low 70s still a couple of light showers we start to see things taper off a bit of a break in the action and actually some sunshine which is not necessarily a good thing because all that's going to do is just heat up the atmosphere make it that much more unstable later on today we get that like i said a break in the action then things start to fire up as we head in toward the late afternoon hours and heading in toward dinner time a couple of those showers and thunderstorms and again some of these are going to be on the strong to potentially severe side scale of one to five San Antonio's at about a two with some scattered potentially severe storms very high winds and large hail are going to be the biggest threat to this we're talking maybe inch two inch diameter hail and then an isolated tornado of course in situations like this can't be ruled out the majority you see the darker red further off to the east that's where the stronger storms are going to be and the biggest threat for severe weather so scattered showers around the area this morning again we see the somewhat of a break in midday and then they start to refire and it's going to be just about along uh, 281 and then right along the I-35 corridor and it's going to be dinner time when things really start to get going. That will work its way then off to the east as the evening rolls on. And it all depends on where a feature called a dry line and as you can see, it's the dividing line between the dry air and the moist air. Where this actually kind of sets up, is it further to the east? Is it a little further to the west by 5.30 this evening? So that's the determining factor on who sees the stronger storms. Dry air, windy conditions, that prompts red flag warnings out to the west later on today. And we're still going to have the fire threat tomorrow. Fire weather watches are already posted for our western counties tomorrow. So. We do get some rain. Doesn't look like it's going to be enough, especially out to the west. Won't see anything, so the fire danger remains high out there. 72, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms around at noon. That's about the time we see the break in the action. Then it really starts to get going later on today. It's going to be warm, going to be humid, 83 degrees. Some of those storms may be on the uh, potentially severe side. Then we clear on out, so yes, it's nice to see some rain. Not enough. We're going to have windy conditions in the next few days. Fire danger is going to remain kind of on the, the high side. Really, and uh, lower humidity. So, yes, comfortable weather, but not necessarily a good thing in this situation. Well, watch out for it. Thank yeah. you, Mike. But the timing of everything later on today, grab the app, stay tuned. Be weather aware. Have a plan. 454, about 61 degrees. And coming up next, why Kanye West will not be performing at the Grammys next month, plus more success for the Batman. Lottery numbers this morning. No, I've been told. We'll be right back. 
More good news for the Batman, but not so good news for Kanye West. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. I'm vengeance. $300 million for the Batman. That's the total domestic take for the gritty superhero action drama after this weekend's $36.8 million take. More than enough to keep it top of the box office for a third straight week. Peter. The Batman's now second only to Spider-Man No Way Home in pandemic-era North American earnings. Worldwide, it crossed the $500 million mark midweek and has now collected $598 million globally and counting. What you doing in the club on a Thursday? Kanye West won't be performing at the Grammys next month. Variety says his rep confirmed a report in The Blast that Ye's recent, quote, concerning online behavior is the reason. The rapper is going through a contentious divorce with estranged wife Kim Kardashian and has posted social media content about her and others that got him banned from Instagram for 24 hours last week. The Grammys are April 3rd. And happy birthday to actor Gary Oldman. He's 64 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Now 458, 61 degrees. There's a lot more ahead on GMSA. After the break, the Senate gets ready to start a week of high-profile confirmation hearings for Judge Katanji Brown-Jackson. From China to New York in an hour, we'll tell you about how that could be possible coming up in your morning Tech Bites. Another look at the roads with TransGuide. There's a look there at Highway 281, 8 St. Mary's. Of course, of course, the roads are slick, and that accident just popped up that Mike was talking about earlier on I-10 and Warsbach Road. And 281 near San Pedro, near the airport, it's southbound 281 that we're seeing a wreck, and there's I-10 at 1604. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We have the potential for severe storms later on this afternoon. When are they going to hit and who is under the highest risk? This morning, Supreme Court confirmation hearings get underway for Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. Meanwhile, we'll have an update on the health scare of Justice Clarence Thomas. I'm Alex Pache on Capitol Hill. All that coming up. And taking a look outside with live camera, waking up to wet roads this morning, a little bit of rain there and more to come. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, March 21st. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a beautiful weekend. The weather worked out at least over the weekend. Now it's a little different. Uh, absolutely. It was an outstanding weather weekend. Mike Ostrage is here to talk more about uh, morning rain and afternoon storms. Yeah, uh, you know, spring began yesterday, 1030 in the morning, and now we've got some spring showers around here. Then, of course, with spring, we do have that potential for some severe storms. Much of the area is under the risk for severe weather this morning. And looking, as you can see, the, the darkest shade of of red is there further off to the northeast, which does include San Marcos and going up the I-35 corridor, heading off to the east. And here in town, we are under the risk for, call it scattered severe storms, uh, on two on a scale of one to five, lesser chances further off to the west. First of all, we have to make it through this morning because it's going to be slow going. We've got a lot of light rain out there, just enough to kind of make the road slippery because, you know, it doesn't really wash off all the oil and all the dirt and everything like that. So everything is moving in here from the southeast, from the Gulf. This is where overnight, you know, yesterday we had very dry air in place. We had a high fire danger yesterday with the breezy conditions. Now the humidity really came back in here, and that's bringing in with it a lot of this light rain. It has been raining. Uh, if it's not showing up on radar right now, it may be some very, very fine mist out there, but just assume again, all roads are wet this morning, so take it easy. It's going to be kind of slow going and again, more of this rain off to the east, and this is where the majority of the potentially stronger storms are going to be like I showed you further off to the east. We also have some fog to deal with Castroville at two miles visibility right now and temperatures. It is very warm. We are at 60, so a whole different story, about 20 degrees warmer than what it was at this time yesterday. 61 here in town, 59 burning stage. Balverde right now is at 60. Now we've got the chance for severe weather to the east to the west. We've got red flag warnings that go into effect later on today because of the very, very dry air that's going to be coming on in here as well as the windy conditions. So a very high fire danger and we're going to keep that fire danger around here for the next couple of days. Oak is moderate. Same thing with ash. Mold is probably going to be going up given the fact we have more moisture out there. So showers and some fog around this morning, maybe a rumble of thunder 
better. And then later on today, we see somewhat of a break in the action midday. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Then later on this afternoon, heading in toward dinner time, that's when things are going to fire up. Severe storms are possible. High wind and very large hail. Isolated tornado can't be ruled out. Then after this, good looking weather. However, the fire danger is going to remain high for the next few days. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stevens out sick this morning, so traffic authority right now. We do have some problems already on the road. As you can see on the map, we've got just a couple of spots out there where up 281 and then out 10 where we're seeing a couple of these accidents. Here's a look at 10 at Wurzbach and then also over here at uh, 281 at southbound 281. Excuse me, that's 35 at San Pedro. There's 10 at Probant and there's southbound 281 at San Pedro. So again, lie yourself some extra time this morning. It is wet. Mike, thank you for coverage on both. We're new this morning, there's an active Amber Alert for two missing kids. That alert issued just after two this morning out of the Texas Panhandle. Sarah Costa is live with that information that we know at this time. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Stephanie. So what we know so far is that two children, according to the Pampa Police Department, are they're looking for them. They are under the age of 10 and Pampa Police believe they are in danger. The suspect is driving a silver truck, but just take a look at your screen for these photos. So this is two year old Emily Reagan. The Pampa Police Department says she has blonde hair and brown eyes and was last seen wearing a gray shirt with pink and yellow words on the front. She is 40 pounds and two foot six officers also looking for seven year old Riley Reagan. She has blonde hair and blue eyes and was last seen wearing a tie dye sweatshirt and blue jeans. She is 94 pounds and four foot four. They were last seen in Pampa around that's about 60 miles northeast of Amarillo at 430 Sunday afternoon. Now police say a suspect connected to this abduction is 28 year old Logan Daniel Reagan. He is six foot one and 250 pounds. He's driving a 2007 silver Toyota Tundra. The suspect's vehicle has a black grill guard and front damage in the center and blood from a hog along the front side of the truck running board. Again, law enforcement officials believe these children are in danger. If you have any information that could lead the Pampa Police Department to the suspect, you're urged to call the Pampa Police. That number on your screen, it is 806-669-5700. Live from near downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Bear County deputies say a robbery suspect is in custody thanks to a quick-thinking homeowner who slashed the tires of that suspect's getaway vehicle. 50-year-old Eduardo Sacedo is charged with aggravated robbery. This incident happened at a home in Sandy Oaks when deputies found Sacedo allegedly rummaging through the belongings inside a home. Sacedo ran off, but the homeowner confronted him and threatened him with a knife and got into his vehicle. Now, before he was able to take off, deputies say the homeowner slashed one of the vehicle tires with a machete. Sacedo's bond is set at $75,000. 507 this morning. Confirmation hearings will begin for Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, the first black woman nominated to the U.S. Supreme Court. ABC's Alex Prache is on Capitol Hill with more. This morning, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas hospitalized. The court saying he was admitted to a D.C. area hospital Friday evening after experiencing flu-like symptoms. He underwent tests, was diagnosed with an infection, and is being treated with intravenous antibiotics. The court saying he's expected to be released from the hospital in a day or two. At 73, Thomas is the second oldest justice and the most senior conservative. He doesn't have any known health issues and is both vaccinated and boosted for COVID, according to the court. The news about Thomas's health comes as a confirmation hearing kicks off today for a judge looking to join him on the Supreme Court. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, the first black woman nominated in the court's 233 year history, set to address U.S. senators. My life has been blessed beyond measure, and I do know that one can only come this far by faith. Since her nomination, the 51-year-old Harvard graduate has sat down with a bipartisan list of more than 40 senators. She's also held mock sessions with the White House ahead of today's opening remarks. Judge Jackson has been scrutinized more than any person I can think of. This is her fourth time before the Senate Judiciary Committee, and three previous times uh, she came through with flying colors and bipartisan support. The Still, top Republicans are on the fence. I haven't made a final decision as to how I'm going to vote. 
In what could become a contentious week of hearings, Republican Senator Josh Hawley suggested in tweets that Jackson has a long record of letting child porn offenders off the hook. The White House forcefully pushing back. A group of far-right Republican senators, as you noted, have launched a last-ditched eve of hearing desperation attack on her record. Democrats actually don't need Republican support to push Judge Jackson through, but the White House says they want GOP support to shore up the court's credibility. Alex Perche, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Back here at home, shifting gears, the 75th, uh, 75th rather annual Poteen Strawberry Festival is about a month away. We know the performers you can expect to see. Some of the top names include Sarah Evans, Kevin Fowler, and Randall King. In total, 13 artists and bands will perform over the three-day-long festival. Tickets on sale, which includes the performances. We have a link where you can purchase on our website at ksat.com. And time now, 510 and 61 degrees for now. Still ahead, how an online game is using its popularity to help people affected by the war in Ukraine. Also next, how a local nurse is saving lives every day in more ways than one. Outside with live camp. If you're just now waking up, it's a mess out there right now. Just like showers for the most part. But Mike says this afternoon could be a game changer with the potential for some severe thunderstorms, including hail and possible tornadoes. We're on alert just to be safe. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just about 514 on your Monday morning, a nurse at South Texas Blood and Tissue Center saved a young woman's life over in London. Dorothy Dot Ward registered to be a donor on the bone marrow transplant list about years ago and never thinking she'd be a match. So in 2004, Gemma, a 19 year old in London, relapsed and her leukemia came back. She needed a transplant and Dot was her match. The two now bonded for life, kept in touch and 18 years later, Dot just returned from Gemma's wedding. We have this saying where she says, I am you, and I was like, and you are me. And if you would like to sign up to be a donor like Dot, we have a link on our website at kset.com. Well, that story is a heck of an incentive, isn't it? Yes, it is. I love, I love the bond that they have. Yes, so lifelong sweet. friends. 514, about 61 degrees. Coming up next, we're going to tell you more about a new supersonic jet that will fly from China to New York in one hour. Who do you think you are? Canceling plans? Commanding a room? Being your own biggest fan? Who said you could do that? Say no to settling. No to compromising. Yes to getting all of the above. Who? No. Really. Tell us. Who do you think you are? Oh. You're you. And TJ Maxx is where you can afford to be you to the max. You'd think the sax player would be getting ready for his solo, but no, he's currently checking his investments. You gotta have a plan outside the band, man. Digital tools so impressive, you just can't stop. What would you like the power to do? Got lingering odors? Grab Febreze Small Spaces. Press firmly to activate, and Small Spaces continuously eliminates and prevents odors to freshen up any small room for up to 45 days. Febreze. La, 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 la. In today's Tech Bites, the maker of Fortnite is lending financial help to Ukraine. Epic is donating two weeks of proceeds from the video game to Ukraine-related humanitarian efforts. Microsoft will also commit net proceeds from Fortnite to getting more aid to Ukrainian people. Google is rolling out a new update for its Android app. Users can now delete the last 15 minutes of their search history. It was made available to the iOS app in July. Google also has a new tool that automatically deletes items in a search history that that are 3, 18, or 36 months old. And a Chinese company says it's working on a supersonic jet that will fly from China to New York in just one hour. Space Transportation says the jet will be powered in part by reusable launch boosters. It hopes to start ground testing by next year with flights in the years to come. Those are your Tech bites. 519, Mike Ostrace joins us now, and we all agree we don't need the severe weather, but it's yeah. part of our job to let you know when it might happen. Yeah. That's going to be later on this afternoon mm -hmm. when things really start to uh, to fire up. And this morning, it's just messy out there, and we've got a lot going on on the roads this morning. Again, this is the picture that everybody's really going to be seeing. It is wet out there. We've got some fog to deal with right now, and the rain is, there's some of it that's 
too light. I've been emphasizing this too light to be picked up on radar. It was this very, very fine mist. But of course, we do have these scattered light showers uh, kind of broken around the area, filling in somewhat on the uh, southeast side of town and then right up there, 281. All of the, the major highways coming into town for the morning commute are on the wet side, and we've got plenty of uh, kind of plenty of problems out there, but as you can see all along 35 uh, from southwest up to northeast and then on the east side of town as well and then further off to the east. This is where the majority of the heaviest thunderstorms are going to be later on this afternoon. Visibility five miles Randolph. No problem at New Braunfels. Go up to San Marcos, though, and you run into some of that fog. Casterville, two miles for Bernie Stage, and now it's starting to work its way in toward Kerrville. So a lot of these numbers are going to continue to stay like this. They may go up and then obviously may drop down very quickly. So that's something that you really have to watch out for, obviously, as we know how quickly the, the visibility does change around here. Temperatures are almost 20 degrees warmer than where we started off yesterday. Of course, yesterday was on the cool side. This morning, we're definitely on the warm side of normal which normal is usually in the uh, low 50s. And we're going to stay with the clouds, with the, uh, the very high humidity, and the rain keeps temperatures really steady. So just basically steady all morning long. We'll have a few light showers, grab a rain jacket before you head out the door, and then we'll still have a couple of showers left over later on this morning. Temperatures are going to work their way up into the low 70s by noon, and that's also where we're going to start to see kind of a break in the action. Just a few showers left over here, but also some sunshine by the middle of the afternoon. That, though, is going to help to heat up the atmosphere a warm atmosphere is a very unstable atmosphere, and that's what's then going to help support some of those thunderstorms later on. So as we head in toward late afternoon dinner time, that's when the uh, stronger storms are going to start start to pop up around here. Again, the majority of the strongest storms are further off to the northeast, but we are under the uh, kind of two on a scale of five risk here in town with the uh, scattered. We'll call it scattered potential uh, severe storms more around New Braunfels up around San Marcos. Fewer of those further off to the uh, south and west high winds. Large hail are going to be the biggest problems with this and of course in a situation like this can't rule out isolated tornadoes. So we've got the scattered rain around here this morning break in the action midday then right up to the north later on this afternoon. Notice how this line is starting to develop here and then it works its way off to the east somewhat and it'd be right along I-35 with this computer model. Now it really depends where a dry line does set up further off to the west. That's where more of the severe storms are going to be. So this is something we really have to watch, but it's pretty much along 281 I-35 corridor where the the biggest threat for this is going to be later on this afternoon. Then out to the west where it's clear and windy and dry, that's the red flag warning and same thing tomorrow. We're going to have a very high fire danger tomorrow with the windy and dry conditions in place. Today, the difference being between today and tomorrow, today is the day we get the potential severe weather and storms off to the east. So 72 at noon, a couple of storms. That's when we see kind of the break in the action noon, early afternoon. Then they start to fire up later on this afternoon and 83 for high temperature with uh, some of those potentially severe. So this is going to be 281 east. That's the dividing line right now. And then off to the west, it is going to be sunny and dry and windy tomorrow. Windy, breezy on Wednesday, high fire danger tomorrow and on Wednesday. And very consistent all the way through the weekend, back to the low 80s by the weekend. But uh, yeah, this afternoon, two places. To the east, watch out for severe weather. West, watch out for fires. Okay, and we mentioned that traffic's kind of a team effort this morning. Let's show you some Transkai cameras. I I'm now seeing not only one, but two accidents at 281 southbound near the airport. We also have one working right now at I-10 eastbound at Wurzbach. We've still got uh, first responders out there at the scene right now, folks having to move over, and there's I-10 at ProBan. But Steph and I, we've already agreed today could be a very, very active morning commute as folks, folks head back to work and school from spring break. And it has been been kind of busy so far. I mean, being it's so early on Monday morning, but you guys be safe out there. And if you can allow yourself some extra time and there's a look there at Highway 281 at Grayson, looks mm -hmm. like there's an accident over there as well. Yeah, it looks like we've got a truck completely spun around and up against the divider there. This one is, I think, a new accident that has come in, but that is a normal traffic trouble spot in that big curve there, 281 at Grayson. Please be careful, especially on those curves. All right. And for now, it's 524 and 61 degrees out there. The movie Coda nabs another big honor. We'll tell you which celebs are raising millions for Ukraine relief. All that coming up in your morning spotlight.
The film Coda nabs another major honor ahead of the Academy Awards. Plus, Kanye West will no longer take the stage at the Grammys. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Hey, Coda wins big. The acclaimed drama took home the night's top prize at the Producers Guild of America Awards Saturday. Next up for Coda is the Oscars, where the streaming hit is up for Best Picture. With another trophy under its belt, Hollywood's biggest honor may not be far off. Kanye West has been pulled from performing at the Grammy Awards. The rapper has five nominations going into the April 3rd ceremony, including Album of the Year. But sources close to West tell CNN his performance was pulled due to concerning online behavior. The news comes after Instagram temporarily banned West for using a racial slur directed at Grammy's host, Trevor Noah. We just want to say that um, we hit our goal. Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher have raised millions of dollars for refugees fleeing Ukraine amid the ongoing Russian invasion. The couple previously vowed to match all donations up to $3 million, and they revealed in a video posted to their GoFundMe page that they've now brought in over $30 million for relief efforts. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. We're going to... 528, about 61 degrees. And coming up on GMSA, as Ukrainians refuse a Russian demand to surrender, what President Joe Biden is doing to start off a week of talks aimed at intensifying the world's response to the conflict. And ahead on GMSA at 6, we'll tell you how you can protect your family from household items that could be poisonous. Making headlines this morning, President Biden set to ramp up the world's response to the war in Ukraine. What the president has planned for today, coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, a lot of rain this morning. Slick roads, be aware of that if you're on your way out early this morning. And good morning, everybody. It is Monday, March 21st, officially in spring. Mm -hmm. And Mike wants us to be thinking about potential for some severe storms. That's yeah. right. We had the spring-like nice weather yesterday, and mm -hmm. now the rain. Yeah, and rain this morning, which would be great if we could keep this around and it would get a little heavier and keep it around for a few days. That, unfortunately, is not going to happen. But yes, later on this afternoon, this morning, all we have to worry about are the uh, the wet roads out there. But uh, later on this afternoon is when the uh, potentially severe storms are going to be working their way on in. So here's what's going on right now. Uh, pretty much cut the area in half right along 28137 and the rain is off to the east obviously the moisture is coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico came in overnight we had low humidity yesterday and that's why again fire danger yesterday but then humidity came back up out to the west hardly anything and that unfortunately is going to be the situation throughout the rest of today we do have a pretty widespread air maybe light and a a little bit more than a light shower there heading out 10 on the east side of uh, Bear County and then going, uh, you know, if you're coming in on 10, you're going to run into wet roads pretty much everywhere, even though no rain in this particular shot at this moment. But we've had rain this morning. We've had a lot of mist around there and it's just enough to where it doesn't really wash off all the uh, dirt and oil off the roads. And then more of these showers off to the east and around Seguin going down toward uh, Floresville, Nixon, and this rain will continue off to the east. And this is where the majority later on today of the potentially severe storm is going to be. On top of rain, we do have some reduced visibility. New Braunfels, not bad, but then come down 35, you're going to run into some of this fog and and uh, this is going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the morning. Then later on this afternoon, we do have the threat for severe weather. The majority or the highest threat with numerous severe storms is going to be further off to the northeast, up around New Braunfels, Austin. You're somewhat under the gun in New Braun, excuse me, uh, San Marcos and New Braunfels. And then here in town, it's going to be the scattered severe potential for uh, some of these stronger storms with high winds and hail and then lesser amounts off to the west and yeah very very large hail inch to inch diameter hail can be expected with this and an isolated tornado is a possibility further off to the west then well we got storms to the east we've got the red flag warnings that go into effect later on this afternoon because the dryer is going to move on into the west and windy conditions oak ash are both on the moderate side so it looks like we're finally getting the oak season around here 
72 at noon. We do get a break in the action at noon right around midday and then it's going to fire back up and it's going to be about dinner time into early evening when some of those uh, potentially severe storms hit us and also some gusty winds. Well, rest of the week's forecast is coming up. Traffic Authority Stephen is off today, so take a look at what's going on. We've had some uh, accidents around the area already this morning and we've got a couple of them out there right now over on 10 and then a few of them on uh, 281 and we are looking at this one there at 281 at Grayson. All also, we've got one coming in right now, 90 at Callahan. As you see, first responders are on the scene, and there's a few more out there. 35 Cesar Chavez, everything's moving along fairly well. 90 at Couples, going pretty good. But again, you just got to really take it easy this morning because it is going to be slippery out there, and this is going to be the case all morning long. New this morning, San Antonio police say shots fired from the outside hit a man inside a west side home. They believe they know who the shooter was. It happened overnight on the street called Gene Walk. Katrina Weber has that story live from the downtown area. And Katrina, do police know what led up to the shooting? Well, they told us that they believe this is a situation of an ex-boyfriend striking out with gunfire. Now, they say the victim of the shooting was inside a home in the 900 block of Gene Walk with his girlfriend when someone fired at the home from outside. This happened shortly after 1 o'clock this morning. Police say that man who was in his 20s was hit in both of his legs. He was taken to a hospital for treatment, but his wounds were not life-threatening. Well, officers again told us that they suspect that the woman's ex-boyfriend is the one who showed up and fire those gunshots. They have not, uh, they say that that's based on information they got from witnesses, but at this time they have not made any arrests. Reporting live from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Turning now to the war in Ukraine, you're looking at a live picture at the capital of Kyiv, where it is 1236 in the afternoon. The country is still refusing to surrender to Russia, even after the bombing of a building uh, believed to have children inside. And this morning, the U.S. is stepping up its efforts to help. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, President Joe Biden is holding talks today with European leaders. <laughs> Russian President Vladimir Putin seems undeterred by increasing civilian casualties in Ukraine. Uh, this is really disgusting. This week, the White House is expanding its efforts to help. President Joe Biden is holding a call with European leaders this morning. Then he's talking with American CEOs about the war. On Wednesday, he travels to Europe for an emergency NATO summit. He'll visit Warsaw, Poland Friday for talks with that country's president about Russia's war in Ukraine. And he's got another invitation. Why don't he can visit Kiev next week as a symbol of our solidarity? The Ukrainian capital is a war zone right now, so Biden does not plan to stop there. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has his own ideas of what he'd like in the president's agenda. So what I'd like to see the president do is to reassure our Eastern Bloc uh, allies. The Ukrainian people are begging Biden and the U.S. to offer more support. The besieged city of Mariupol refused Russia's demand to surrender today. The Ukrainian president says he's ready to talk to Putin at any time, but he's worried if talks fail. That would mean that this is a third world war. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. This morning, U.S. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, longest serving member of the high court, is still in the hospital with flu-like symptoms. The 73-year-old was admitted to Sibley Memorial in Washington, D.C. Friday night. A spokesperson for the Supreme Court says the justice does not have COVID-19. Justice Thomas being treated with intravenous antibiotics and could be released in a day or two. His absence comes as the Supreme Court is hearing oral arguments through Wednesday of this week. While Thomas does not plan to take part remotely, he will review transcripts and listen to audio of the arguments. After 83-year-old Justin Stephen Justice Stephen Breyer retires at the end of the term, Clarence Thomas will become the oldest member of the court. Authorities in Austin say they have a suspect in custody after four people were shot in Austin's entertainment district early Sunday morning. Austin police investigators believe the shooting resulted from a disturbance between two groups of people. All four gunshot victims were found outside the Toll House bar. First responders say they were taken by ambulance to a local trauma hospital with non-life-threatening injuries.
Lawmakers in several states are trying to ease the burden at the pump. Maryland has become the first state to suspend its gas tax, shaving 36 cents off every gallon, saving the average driver about $5 per fill up. In Georgia, the governor is signing a similar bill to eliminate the state's gas tax about 29 cents per gallon through May. Many Americans are being forced to make changes these days. 59% say they plan to change their driving habits. Now that the average price for gas is more than $4 a gallon, three out of four say they'll try to drive less if prices go higher. Time now, 539 and 61 degrees out there. A popular brand is recalling some of its lotion. Why it can affect those with weakened immune systems. And CPS Energy working right now to get the lights back on for all of its customers. So let's take a look at the outage map right now. According to the screen, there are about 5,000 customers that are affected. We're going to keep you updated throughout this morning. And outside with live cam, if you are just joining us here on GMSA, it's been a, a rainy night and that continues into early this morning. You can see the wet roads out there. The morning commute could be a mess. Please slow down and leave a little early if you can. 542, lots to talk about in traffic and weather. We'll get you up to speed in a moment. But first off, there are a lot of organizations in and around San Antonio working to help the future generations in our community. The UP partnership is working to do exactly that, but in a unique way. The CEO joined Leading SA to talk about the initiative and the future. The goal is to ensure all young people across Bear County are ready for our future. The group wants to deliver on this plan by coordinating data, aligning pathways, and promoting policy change that can help unlock the full potential of our young people, our community, and our region. Ryan Lugalia Holland, the CEO, joined us live. We discussed a lot. We talked about the progress that we've seen here in the Alamo City the last few years. We talked about getting students ready for the future, and we talked about what comes next. Here's a little bit of our conversation. Future Ready Bear County will be public re publicly released on April 28th with over 50 of our partner institutions. And it's really a response to the pandemic. So our board in April of 2020 launched an equitable recovery pledge to make sure that the inequities that we had in uh, major outcomes like post-secondary enrollment before the pandemic did not get worse and that we could actually use this crisis as a turning point to create uh, a more inclusive Bear County for all of our young people. So that's what drove it. And the plan has three big pillars, what we consider must haves. You can catch our full discussion right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. We have leading essay every Sunday at 8 a.m. So we'll see you next weekend, guys. Back to you. Thank you, Max. 544, about 61 degrees. And coming up next, some important information regarding a recall involving some popular lotion from Jurgens. And welcome back. It's 546. In your morning consumer headlines, the FDA asking consumers to check their 3 ounce and 10 ounce bottles of Jurgens Ultra Healing Moisturizer. It is possible the bottles are contaminated with a bacteria that could cause infection in people with weakened immune systems. The Jurgens products that are part of the recall have a lock code on the back or the bottom of the bottle that starts with the letters ZU. The manufacturer is working to remove the product from warehouses and asking retailers to pull the product from their shelves. A new study cast some doubt on the use of medical marijuana in the treatment of anxiety and depression. The Harvard Medical Study compared divided uh, 269 adult patients into two groups. One group got a medical marijuana card to treat their pain, anxiety, or depression immediately. The other group had to wait 12 weeks. Turned out the patients who got earlier access were 20% more likely to develop marijuana use disorder. That means they became dependent on marijuana without showing improvements to their pain, anxiety, or depressive symptoms. However, the patients did report improvement in insomnia and having a feeling of greater overall well-being. And time now, 548. It's still raining out there, Mike, and I guess it's going to be like that pretty much all day long. All, we, we'll get a break in the action midday, but this morning, rest of the morning commute, this is what you're going to be um, dealing with. Grab a jacket and then later on this afternoon is when things really start to uh, potentially turn nasty. It almost looks like the visibility has improved slightly out there from this vantage point. Still listed at three miles at the airport. Port SA has definitely improved. Castroville has improved as well. Kerrville has dropped down to four miles visibility, so it's pretty much right around Bear County and then further off to the west where most of the uh, the reduced visibility is. It's a combination of fog and just some of this rain around there. 
and we still have a lot of very light rain. It is on the light side. We are not seeing anything as far as any uh, heavier downpours and or any uh, flashes of lightning, any thunder that's being detected on radar as of right now. Again, it is scattered even though it's not raining. Maybe in your neighborhood, the roads are definitely wet because it has been off and on all morning long. We'll continue to be off and on. Right now we do have the showers there on the northeast side of town, over 35 in toward Live Oak, Converse, and Helotus, um, all along 1604, right where all that construction is on the northwest side of town. That's where you're running into some of these uh, these showers as well. But again, any road around town, you've got some, it's wet and more off to the east. And this is where with all that moisture coming in here from the uh, Gulf of Mexico, that's where the majority of any strong to severe storms are. So they're going to be numerous uh, severe, potentially severe storms, high winds, very large hail. And this does include Austin, San Marcos, New Braunfels is sort of on the edge of that. Then you get in towards San Antonio. It's going to be just kind of the scattered variety of these potentially strong to severe storms, lesser ones off to the west. And the timeline for this, the the window is going to be, we'll call it between four and eight o'clock tonight. So this morning, again, it's just some of these scattered showers around here. Temperatures are going to be staying very steady throughout the rest of the morning. Then we see somewhat of a break in the action as we get in toward noon. Temperatures will get up into the low 70s. We get some sunshine mixed in here. Still a, a stray shower, maybe a thunderstorm trying to pop up. But again, then we get into the four o'clock hour, five o'clock. That's when things start to fire up. Again, the biggest threat is going to be further off to the east but here in town we will see some of those also it's going to be very windy gusts are going to be picking up later on this afternoon especially out to the west so we've got kind of a tale of two different um, potentially bad weather events to watch out for strong thunderstorms and uh, fire danger out to the west here's the computer model we keep a few of the showers around this morning. We get that lull in the action midday, even some sunshine mixed in. Then it starts to fire up again, and this is going to be again about four o'clock right there along 281. That line will shift pretty much along see New Braunfels and then going up and towards San Marcos, Seguin, where some of those stronger storms would be. Doesn't mean we're out of the woods here in town as we go on into the, the evening hours with some of these potentially severe storms. Now, as far as where it's going to exactly happen. That depends on exactly where this dry line, look at that, a 30 degree difference, 25, 30 degree difference in dew point temperatures, where this thing starts to kind of set up camp later on this afternoon. And then that's going to be where the stronger storms fire up. So if it's further to the east, that's where it is. If it's further to the west, you may see more of these potentially strong storms, even in towards, say, um, parts of the hill country up around uh, Kendall County. So that's something we watch out for later on this afternoon, where exactly that line is going to be. So the forecast goes like this 72 at noon, couple of showers, thunderstorms. We have the rain this morning, just this nuisance constant, uh, you know, making driving slow this morning. And then later on this afternoon, high temperature up to 83. Some of those storms potentially severe, very large hail and high winds. That's the biggest threat. Isolated tornado, of course, can't be ruled out in any situation like this tomorrow. A lot of sunshine. This is only a the only chance of rain we have in the forecast is today and then the next few days. But then it's not enough rain to really help out. And there's not going to be really anything as far as rain out to the west. So high fire danger today as well as the next couple of days. Great weather. Can't have rain. Great weather, but high fire danger. OK, we'll watch right. out for that as well. Yeah, yes, yeah. we will. Let's check traffic real quick. See how things are looking out there. Stephen is out sick today. Uh, traffic authority coverage right now. We've got accidents in multiple places around town. A lot of these in the normal spots, meaning where there are significant curves. Here's 281 at Grayson. Believe that's southbound. We also have an accident up near the airport, 281 south uh, near San Pedro. There's I-10 at Wurzbach. I believe that's eastbound. That's just now in the clearing stages. We've been tracking that one for a little while, but all morning long we've seen rain on mm -hmm. all our freeways Yeah, all the roadways there and there's a look there at i-35 is that there chavez and loop 1604 at culebra there was an accident or at least flashing lights earlier at highway 90 and uh, callahan actually but this is a shot of highway 90 at couples mm -hmm. so we're checking on those roadways as well mike is indicating that 90 at callahan has it's okay cleared. now oh, okay so that yeah. one's good now 553 on your monday morning Coming up next, find out if the Batman could continue this winning streak at the box office.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are tracking the very latest on the breaking news out of China. A plane crashing overnight. It's a Boeing 737 with 133 people on board. We'll tell you what we know right here on GMA. What is your deal, man? Dog rode into fifth place in its fifth weekend in theaters, grossing $4.1 million. The slasher film X expanded to wide release and made $4.4 million for fourth place. Uncharted fell to third, but collected $8 million for a domestic total of $126 million. The anime adventure Jujutsu Kaisen Zero debuted in second place, opening strong with $17.7 million. What are you saying, Kinsey Moon Knights for the Penguin? The Batman crossed the 300 million mark in domestic grosses, topping the chart for a third straight weekend with $36.8 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, the debate continues about all those rising gas prices and how to help drivers. We'll tell you what some experts are saying should be done next. Traffic is a mess in different spots around town. Normal spots, especially on those curves where people typically go way too fast. It's been a rainy morning so far, and it will be a messy commute. There's 281 at San Pedro. Checking in with Mike Osterhage for an update on both traffic and weather, including the potential for some severe storms in part of our viewing area as we go into tonight. Complete coverage coming up. An Amber Alert issued just after 2 o'clock this morning for two children under the age of 10 out of Pampa, Texas. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Coming up on GMSA, we have those details. And this morning, scary moments for residents at an apartment complex just north of downtown after an overnight fire. We're going to tell you if anyone was hurt. I think that we have to use any format, any chance in order to have the possibility of negotiating the possibility of talking to Putin. But if these attempts fail, that would mean that, that this is a third world war. Russia's war in Ukraine continues and civilian casualties continue to rise. We'll have the very latest from Eastern Europe. And taking a look outside with live cam, a little rain this morning, so you will notice those roadways are slick. Be careful when you're headed out. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. Welcome back from spring break. If you were off last week, it is Monday, March 21st. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. The weather was really beautiful today, a little different. Let's go ahead and look at all those power outages. Uh, earlier this morning, we had about 5,000 customers affected, and right now we're looking about over 9,000 customers affected by that weather out there. Here's the really weird thing. As we look at this map, there's no really high wind. There's no severe weather to speak of. It's just been light to moderate rain. So it's kind of uh, inexplicable at this point. Yes. So, uh, but Mike Ostray joined us now to join the conversation. A little, little bit of wind in places, but yeah, nothing that's really off the charts yet this morning. That so. we would see typically right. triggering outages on a, on a wider scale. But it will be windier today, and then we're going to have potential for uh, severe strength winds and severe storms later on this afternoon. So, but this morning what we're dealing with is just all this very, very light rain. It's, uh, well, in some places, yes, you may get a, a decent lawn water. But most of this is that nuisance stuff, and it is making the roads very slippery. Again, you know, we always keep saying that you know when you get the light rain starting off, uh, it's not enough to really wash off all the dirt and oil and everything off the roads, and so that's what we are dealing with. It's kind of come to a somewhat of a break in around much of town. We still have some of these showers over there around 87 and 10, uh, so it looks like visibility might have improved slightly over there by the airport. But then you go up to 81, you're going to run into more of that and just the scattered variety on the west side of town over in and around SeaWorld and then further off to the east, Elmador, Flavernia, over towards Seguin and then a lot more rain further off to the east and this is where the majority of any potentially severe storms are going to be further off to the east and especially up to the northeast later on today. Visibility, yep, it has indeed improved out there at the airport. New Braunfels has now dropped down though. Castorville at two miles, three Hondo and it's better than what it was as far as the uh, visibility. Now, later on this afternoon, like I said, the 
best chance to see anything severe, and that would be numerous potentially severe storms. New Braunfels, San Marcos, and then further off to the east and to the northeast, up 35 and out 10. In and around town, it's going to be somewhat lesser chance, about a two on a scale of one to five as far as any potentially severe storms. Like I said, high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threat. So yeah, power outages are definitely going to be uh, potential later on today. Isolated tornadoes, mainly off to the east, but you situation like this, you always can't rule that out. Then further off to the west, it's the red flag warning. So we've got severe storm threat to the east and fire threat off to the west later on today. That red flag warning because bone dry air, Virtually no rain out to the west today and obviously very windy conditions. Oak is now starting. We're getting into that season. Same thing with ash. Mold is on the low side. Temperatures this morning going to be staying steady uh, because of the cloud cover because of the rain and we'll have a couple of these light showers around here. Then we make it up into the mid 70s, low to mid 70s today at noon. We'll start to see somewhat of a break in the action and it's that lull period. Then things fire back up later on today with the potentially uh, severe storms and 83 for high temperatures. This is the only rain chance this week. However, we have more chances for high fire danger in the next couple of days. More on that coming up. Traffic Authority Stephen is is off today and we do already have because of these wet roads you can probably blame it on that as you can see there are a few uh, spots out there that have a couple of accidents on some of the main thoroughfares 90 coming into town 10 281 on the north side as well as right near downtown 281 at san pedro we've got that accident that's just north of the airport and then a couple other spots around town 10 at Wurzbach, everything's moving along very well 35 over there at tupperwine Another one we have going on here in the downtown area, this one 281 at Grayson. So again, especially slow down before you head into those curves this morning. It's going to be like this all morning long. Steph, Mark. All right, thank you, Mike. And right now on our website, we're going to have a list of some of the notorious roadways prone to flooding during heavy rain here in San Antonio. Places like Salado Creek at I-35, Bassey Road and 281, Pin Road and the lower levels of I-35. You can read more about this on KSAT.com. Just look for the story on our homepage. Well, now to an active Amber Alert for two missing kids. That alert issued just after 2 this morning up in the Texas Panhandle. Sarah Costa is live with the information on those children and the suspect. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Stephanie. Yeah, Pampa police are looking for two children under the age of 10. The suspect is driving a silver truck. Police believe these children are in danger. So go ahead and just take a look at your screen. This is two year old Emily Reagan. The Pampa Police Department says she has blonde hair and brown eyes and was last seen wearing a gray shirt with pink and yellow words on the front. She is 40 pounds and two foot six. Officers are also looking for seven year old Riley Reagan. She has blonde hair and blue eyes and was last seen wearing a tie dye sweatshirt and blue jeans. She is 94 pounds and four foot four. They were last seen in Pampa, about 60 miles northeast of Amarillo at 430 Sunday morning. Police say a suspect connected to this abduction is 28 year old Logan Daniel Reagan. He is six foot one and 250 pounds. He's driving a 2007 silver Toyota Tundra. The suspect's vehicle has a black grill guard with the front damage in the center and blood from a hog along the front side of the truck running board. Again, law enforcement officials believe these children are in danger. If you have any information that can lead them to the suspect, you're urged to call the Pampa Police Department. That number on your screen right now, 806-669-5700. Reporting live near downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Breaking overnight, a China Eastern Airlines jet carrying at least 130 people has crashed in the mountains of southern China. That is according to China's Civil Aviation Authority. The Boeing 737 en route from the southwestern city of Kunming to Wangzhou when it lost contact. On board, at least 120 passengers and nine crew. Local media says rescue teams are en route and there is smoke and fire visible out there at the scene. Official casualties are not known at this time. Now to an update on the war in Ukraine, a massive new explosion rocking the capital of Kyiv. And in the south, a new moment of defiance overnight as a deadline for surrender came and went. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. Overnight, a city under siege taking a stand. Leaders in Mariupol have rejected Russia's demand to surrender, defying the 4 a.m. deadline to turn the city over to Russian troops. As the invasion stretches into day 26, Russia is upping its attacks against non-military targets. In Kyiv, 
Ukrainian officials say this missile strike destroyed a shopping mall, killing at least one person. While back in Mariupol, local officials say an airstrike destroyed a school where hundreds of people had been sheltering. This local park has been turned into a temporary cemetery as people bury their friends and neighbors. President Zelensky Sunday said he's willing to speak to Vladimir Putin about how to end this war. I think that we have to use any format, any chance in order to have a possibility of negotiating, the possibility of talking to Putin. But if these attempts fail, that would mean that, that this is a third world war. President Biden travels to Europe to meet with NATO leaders Thursday. From there, he'll go to Poland to discuss the growing humanitarian crisis. According to the UN, at least 10 million people have been forced out of their homes, a quarter of the population. And now, Ukrainian officials accuse Russia of forcibly deporting people. One issue up for discussion when President Biden travels to Europe this week is Poland's proposal for a NATO peacekeeping force in Ukraine, an idea critics say could be dangerously provocative. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. The maker of Fortnite is lending financial help to Ukraine. Epic is donating two weeks of proceeds from the video game to Ukraine-related humanitarian efforts. Microsoft will also commit net proceeds from Fortnite to getting more aid to the Ukrainian people. Over the weekend, firefighters in parts of Texas made progress against a massive complex of wildfires that have killed one and burned at least 50 homes. The Texas A&M Forest Service says wildfires near Eastland are now 25 percent contained and reduced winds and lower humidity improved firefighting conditions. However, the potential for gusty winds has raised the wildfire threat to critical levels. Officials warn fires could also affect parts of Oklahoma, Kansas and Nebraska and warned of an extreme fire risk in those states. Two new CDC studies show COVID vaccines remained highly effective even during the Omicron surge. The study's release shows vaccines still protected well against hospitalization, ventilation and death from COVID-19 infection. At the peak of the Omicron variant, data showed that unvaccinated adults were 12 times more likely to be hospitalized than adults who had received both vaccinations and a booster. For people who received three vaccine doses, including the booster, efficacy was 95% for the Delta variant and 94% for Omicron. A nurse at the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center being credited for saving a young woman's life over in London. Dorothy Dot Ward registered to be a donor on the bone marrow transplant list years ago, never thinking she'd be a match. When in 2004, Gemma, a 19 year old in the UK, relapsed and her leukemia came back. She needed a transplant, and Dot was her match. The two still keep in touch, and now, 18 years later, Dot just returned from Gemma's wedding. We have this saying where she says, I am you, and I was like, and you are me. Now, if you'd like to sign up to be a donor like Dot, we have a link on our website, ksat.com. You just have to fill out a few questions. They'll send you a mouth swab, and then you'll be on your way to potentially saving someone in need. And time now, 611 and 62 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, how'd you like to be able to fly across the world in about an hour? We'll tell you about a new jet in development that may let you do just that. And we're one week away from the 94th Academy Awards this year. The event will have three hosts. We're going to have a preview. And right now, outside with live cam, a bit of a preview. Rainy weather around now. Mike says there is potential for storms in at least part of our area late this afternoon and tonight. What is the risk of hail and tornadoes? He'll get you updated coming up in this newscast. 615, welcome back everyone. Don't do what I did this morning. I looked out the window and there was nothing showing up on radar. I looked out and I was like, yeah, not bad. So didn't bring a rain jacket with me this morning. So <laughs> if it's not raining where you are, grab a jacket because we will uh, continue to see more of these showers. As a matter of fact, look at radar right now and you can see that we've got these scattered light showers. Cut the area in half and there's not much, if anything, out to the west and more of the rain is off to the east. And we have continued to see off and on these light showers here and there. So again, if you look outside and it's not raining right now, just take your rain jacket because 
because we will have more of these showers throughout the rest of the morning. They're going to be off and on. And then later on this afternoon is when things really, really get going. 10 over there around 1604, some of these showers. And then right around, well, from Live Oak over in toward uh, going down 1604 toward 10 and even 87. Lavernia, New Berlin, Seguin, some of these light showers further off to the east. And this is, of course, where all the moisture is just coming in here, being pumped in from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Visibility has improved slightly out there at the airport, I think, because there's not much rain as of right now. But a couple of hours ago, the cloud scene was extremely low, but we're still going to run into some of this fog up around Bernie Stage, uh, Hondo, Castorville, and a little bit up there in New Braunfels. Now, later on this afternoon, that's when we have the potential for some severe storms. The atmosphere is becoming very volatile later on today, and it's not going to help out given the fact that we've got kind of a break in the action midday and may see some sunshine. Off to the northeast, New Braunfels up I-35, going out 10. That's where we're going to see be seeing numerous potentially severe storms in town. It'll be more of the scattered variety and then fewer off to the west. High winds and very large hail. Um, there's a lot of talk about inch, two inch diameter hail potential in some spots with some of these storms later on today. So definitely if you want to make sure your car's in the garage later on this afternoon or under some sort of cover. Then further out to the west where there really isn't rain right now and not going to be any rain, we have the red flag warning going on here. So it's kind of funny to have a fire danger when we also have the severe threat for uh, or the threat for severe weather. And the reason for it is well, first of all, pollen count, oak and ash are both on the uh, the moderate side this morning. So the reason why we have the uh, chance for severe storms is the fact that we've got a dry line, which is going to be setting up right there along about 281. And to the east of that is where the volatile weather is going to be. To the west of that, we've got the very, very dry air in place. So around here this morning, we've got showers, uh, some of that uh, patchy fog around the area, and then most of the cloudy skies, couple of showers midday. And this is when things will start to see even a couple of breaks in the clouds here, maybe a little bit of sunshine, but that only adds a little bit of fuel to the situation by seeing some sunshine mixed on in here. And then later on this afternoon, we get some of those showers and thunderstorms to uh, develop pretty much in between a 281 and 35 right in there. Give or take, depending on where this feature decides to set up later on this afternoon. And some of those may be severe again. Wind and hail are going to be the biggest threats with that. And then, yeah, a lot more sunshine this week. This is the only chance Good news, bad news. This is the only chance of rain that we have this week is today, and we still keep very uh, windy conditions around the next couple of days. So the fire danger is going to be high the next couple of days. So today we see those thunderstorms refiring late this afternoon. Rain around this morning, refiring later on this afternoon. Then things clear out tomorrow, and really the rest of the week is going to be beautiful. But we have more rain or excuse me, more windy conditions and therefore even more high fire danger the next couple of days. We'll have to watch out for that as well. Thank you, Mike. Let's check trans guide right now. See how things are looking out there. We are uh, teaming up the three of us to kind of keep an eye on a bunch of accidents. And one of the big ones right now that we're tracking is in East Bear County out there eastbound I 10. So headed towards Houston right before loop 1604. I spotted a couple of accidents out in that area, but notice we have them kind of scattered all around town right now. That's right. And there's a look there at Highway 281 at San Pedro. That's been a little bit of a problem pretty much uh, all morning long. So watch out for that. Looks like a lane closed there. That was southbound 281 and there's 281 at Grayson. Roads look like they're drying out a little bit there, but don't be fooled, folks. We still have uh, area wide showers and there's a very wet Highway 90 at Nogalitos. And now to the Oscars. After three years with no host, the 94th Academy Awards will be hosted by Amy Schumer, Regina Hall and Wanda Sykes. The show will be live from the Dolby Theater in Hollywood Sunday, March 27th. That's coming up this weekend. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest on what we can all expect. After three years with no host, this year's Academy Awards is giving us one for every year missed. Regina Hall, Wanda Sykes, and Amy Schumer making history as the first all-women trio to MC Hollywood's Biggest Night. I think it's going to keep it vibrant. I think they have credibility, if that matters, with the first 12 or 15 rows of the show, and that means that they can launch a few zingers at the people who are there at the ceremony and keep us all entertained. And as for those much-anticipated zingers, actress and comedian 
comedian Amy Schumer says she has them ready to go, though she admits she's had to adjust her usual brash comedy style for an Oscar audience. Yeah. I consulted my lawyer, yeah, <laughs> and he said, you know, you can't say half of those things. That's right. And so the ones that I can say, I'm going to. Schumer sharing the stage with fellow comedic powerhouse Wanda Sykes, along with Regina Hall, the girls' trip actress ready for Girls' Night at the Academy Awards. It's also really a treat because I love Amy and I love Wanda. The trio joins an epic list of Oscar MCs, including the legendary Bob Hope, Billy Crystal, and Whoopi Goldberg, the first woman and African American to ever host the show solo. Things are a little different. The host is wearing a dress. Yes. And while we don't know much about the show itself, we do know that with these three women, anything can happen. These are three people who are super talented, hard hitting. They're not going to pull any punches. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. A Chinese company says it's working on a supersonic space plane that would fly from China to New York or vice versa in just one hour. The company Space Transportation says the jet will be powered in part by reusable launch boosters. It hopes to start ground testing by next year with flights to come in the years ahead. Interesting. Time now, 622 and 62 degrees for now. If you missed the Spurs game last night, you missed a good one against the uh, Warriors. We'll have highlights after the break. Who do you think you are? Canceling plans? Commanding a room? Being your own biggest fan? Who said you could do that? Say no to settling, no to compromising, yes to getting all of the above. Who? No, really, tell us, who do you think you are? Oh, you're you. And TJ Maxx is where you can afford to be you to the max. You'd think the sax player would be getting ready for his solo, but no, he's currently checking his investments. You gotta have a plan outside the band, man. Digital tools so impressive, you just can't stop. What would you like the power to do? Got lingering odors? Grab Febreze Small Spaces. Press firmly to activate, and Small Spaces continuously eliminates and prevents odors to freshen up any small room for up to 45 days. Febreze. 625, welcome back. Last night, our Spurs needed to take advantage of the fact the Warriors have lost Steph Curry for the rest of the regular season it's after he sprained his left foot in a loss to the Celtics the other night. Silver and Black took control early, going on a 6-0 run to open the game. The Warriors would cut the lead to 63-57 at the half. Late in the game with the pressure on, Keldon Johnson got a rebound and got the go-ahead and layup for San Antonio in the final moments of the game. Spurs escaped Golden State with a much-needed victory. The final from Chase Center. Spurs win 110-108. Josh Richardson led the Spurs with 25 points, and DeJounte Murray had 19. Up next, Spurs travel up to Portland to take on the Trailblazers. Tip-off is set for 9 o'clock our time Wednesday. Then the team travels to New Orleans on Saturday. That will be tough. Go Spurs go. Time now 626 and 62 degrees for now. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA, the latest on an active Amber Alert for two missing children last seen in the Texas Panhandle. We're going to have those details. And tracking a number of accidents still this morning. There's I-10 at Loop 1604. And I believe this camera is in East Bear County right now. And we have one, potentially two accidents slowing traffic in the eastbound lanes of I-10. It is a mess out there on a very wet Monday morning. And good morning to you. It is a very busy Monday morning, March 21st. Thanks for joining us, and we'll get to weather in just a minute. But first, let's look at the CPS outage map. Uh, we went from 5,000 outages this morning. Now we're at like 10,000 customers affected. Uh, and that's a current look there at the CPS outage map. We actually need to refresh that. It's up to 12,400 customers without power last check. Uh, we don't know why we've got so many outages right now, because we don't have severe weather in the air right now. But we have had the rain, yes. and you said there has been a little bit of wind here or there. Enough wind, you know, 
think about maybe, you know, could a couple of limbs have fallen or something mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, it's not as though you walk outside and you're getting, you know, just knocked around by these strong winds. Later on this afternoon, though, that's going to be a different situation. We do have the, the risk for some severe weather later on this afternoon. A couple of sprinkles out to the west around Uvalde. That's the exception rather than the rule. And that may be about all you see out there, one or two of them. But just kind of, again, cut the area in half. Most of the rain, the majority of it is off to the east. And we've been seeing, even though it may not be raining right in your backyard, your neighborhood right now, all the roads are wet. We've had rain moving through all morning long. They're not going to be drying out in a situation like this. So roads are wet. Take it easy driving. And down to around Elmendorf, Lavernia, New Berlin, 87, up around Live Oak. A couple of uh, showers as of right now. And these few here and there. And again, it's just enough to make the road slippery because it's not washing all the oil and dirt off the roads. And then just again, scattered variety of rain off to the east. But later on, things are going to get going. We've got a couple of features that are uh, giving us the potential, plus a very volatile atmosphere later on today. So we've got numerous potential severe storms northeast, including New Braunfels, kind of on the uh, tail end of that. San Marcos, Austin, Gonzales going out 10, going up uh, 35. Here in town, it's just going to be kind of the scattered variety and then maybe one or two isolated ones further off to the west. We're looking at high winds, very large hail with some of these potentially severe storms later on today. And the window of opportunity is going to be about dinner time would be the center of it, four to eight o'clock right around in there. Off to the west then, it's the threat for fires. We've got a red flag warning goes into effect for our western counties because of the bone dry air. So it's the dividing line between the bone dry air and the very humid air. And that's where most of the uh, severe storms are going to be popping up. Oak and ash are both on the moderate side this morning. And the updated count is going to be coming out in about, uh, say, 45 minutes or so. 72 at noon. We actually get somewhat of a break in the action at noon, even a little bit of clearing early afternoon. Then we see those storms fire up again by about 5 o'clock this afternoon, 4 to 8, like I said, 83 for a high temperature. And then later on tonight, things will start to kind of uh, wane a little bit, work their way further off to the east. And it's going to be gusty as well later on today. Then Fire danger remains high the next few days. More on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stevens off today. We've got a few big accidents out there and have had a lot of them all morning long. The only ones, a uh, few of them have gone off the map right now. Up there, just north of the airport, 281 southbound, there is an accident. And then further off to the east, and this is that camera, this is 10 eastbound at 1604 on the far east side of Bear County. As you can see, it looks like traffic has completely come to a standstill there and eastbound 10 would be uh, blocked off traffic's being diverted onto the access road and then elsewhere around town 35 Tupperwine, uh, 281 at San Pedro. That was that other accident. As you can see, traffic southbound lanes is just down to one lane in the left-hand lane. So just uh, it's going to be slow going this morning. Take your patience and take your time. Mike, thank you so much. Well, bullets fired into a West Side home have sent a man to the hospital. San Antonio police say he was hit by gunfire that may have come from his love rival. It happened overnight on a street called Gene Walk. Katrina Weber has a live report from downtown. And Katrina, have they had any luck in tracking down the shooter? Well, the last word we had was that police was still looking for him, but it seems that they do know who he is. The police say the man who was shot was inside that west side home in the 900 block of Gene Walk with his girlfriend when bullets tore into the home. The victim, who's in his 20s, was hit in both legs and taken to a hospital. Witnesses told them the shooter fired from outside, then took off in a green car. Police believe that the shooter is the ex-boyfriend of the woman who was in that home. They say the man who was shot is her current boyfriend. Now, his wounds were not believed to be life-threatening. And again, police are still looking for that shooting suspect. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Now to an active Amber Alert for two missing kids from the Texas Panhandle. Right now, the Pampa Police Department looking for two-year-old Emily Reagan. She has blonde hair, brown eyes, last seen wearing a gray shirt with pink and yellow words on the front.
Officers also looking for seven-year-old Riley Reagan. She has blonde hair and blue eyes and was last seen wearing a tie-dye sweatshirt and blue jeans. Now police say a suspect connected to the abduction, 28-year-old Logan Daniel Reagan. He's driving a 2007 silver Toyota Tundra. Law enforcement officials believe these children are in danger. If you have any information that could lead to them or the suspect, you are asked to call the Pampa Police Department. That number on your screen, 806-669-5700. And in Austin, authorities say they have a suspect in custody after four people were shot in Austin's entertainment district. It happened early Sunday. Austin police investigators believe the shooting resulted from a disturbance between two groups of people. All four gunshot victims were found outside a bar. They are expected to be okay. This morning, Justice Clarence Thomas, longest serving member of the U.S. Supreme Court, still in the hospital with flu-like symptoms. The 73-year-old admitted on Friday night. A spokesperson for the court says the justice does not have COVID. Thomas is being treated and could be released in a day or two. His absence comes as the Supreme Court is hearing oral arguments through Wednesday of this week. Today, the Senate Judiciary Committee is set to begin its historic confirmation hearings for Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. The 51 year old federal judge would be the first black woman on the Supreme Court. Barring a significant misstep by Jackson, Democrats who control the Senate by the slimmest of margins intend to wrap up her confirmation before Easter. Jackson is expected to present an opening statement later this afternoon, then answer questions from the committee's 11 Democrats and 11 Republicans over the next two days. It's not clear yet if Republicans will go after Jackson given that her confirmation would not alter the court's 6-3 conservative majority. To the ongoing war in Eastern Europe, you're looking live right now at Kyiv, the Ukrainian capital, where it looks deceivingly peaceful at 1.36 in the afternoon. President Joe Biden has added a stop in Poland to his upcoming trip to Eastern Europe for urgent talks with NATO and European allies as Russian forces concentrate their fire upon cities and trap civilians in the Kremlin's nearly month-old invasion of Ukraine. Biden, who leaves Washington Wednesday, will first travel to Brussels and then Poland, where he'll meet with leaders there. Poland's neighbors, Ukraine, uh, has taken in more than 2 million refugees from the fighting. It's been one of the most vocal in asking fellow NATO members to consider getting more involved. Biden and NATO have said repeatedly that while the United States and the military alliance will provide weapons and other defense support to Ukraine, they are determined to avoid any escalation on their side that risks a broader war with Russia. There's a growing debate over gas prices and how to help drivers. ABC's Rhiannon Alley looks at the argument over suspending the gas tax. This morning, there's no escaping the pain at the pump. You know, the gas prices are high. Everybody can't afford those gas prices. Gas prices now averaging $4.26 a gallon in the U.S. and approaching $7 in parts of California. Lawmakers in several states are trying to ease the burden. Maryland has become the first state to suspend its gas tax, shaving 36 cents off every gallon, saving the average driver about $5 per fill up. It's almost unheard of for a major piece of legislation to pass in such a short period of time and with such universal bipartisan support. Uh, but together, uh, we have all risen to the occasion. In Georgia, the governor signing a similar bill to eliminate the state's gas tax, about 29 cents per gallon through May. And in Michigan, the state Senate has voted to approve suspending its gas tax for six months. But Governor Gretchen Whitmer is not on board. She says it would hurt road repair and infrastructure projects funded by the gas tax. So instead, she wants the federal government to step in. There's conversation at the federal level as to how we can help families. Gas prices began climbing as inflation grew worse and supply chain issues unfolded, then soared after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Many Americans are being forced to make changes. 59% of Americans say they plan to change their driving habits now that gas is more than $4 per gallon. And three out of four people say they'll try to drive less if prices top $5. In California, in response to those rising prices, lawmakers have proposed a $400 rebate for all taxpayers. Supporters say it's a better approach because it doesn't affect funding for future transportation projects and it helps more people. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York.
In your morning consumer headlines, not much movement in stock markets around the world overnight as investors hope for a peace deal between Russia and Ukraine. An index of Asian Pacific shares down 0.2 percent, Chinese blue chips down 0.1 percent, oil prices up amid tight supplies. U.S. crude is now topping $108 a barrel. With mass mandates dropping and more companies planning to get workers back to offices, anxiety levels are up again for many employees. New York Times says one of the biggest problems is the patchwork of COVID safety rules creating confusion for just about everyone. And there are a lot of organizations here in San Antonio working to help future generations in our community. The UP partnership is doing exactly that in a unique way. The CEO joined Leading SA this weekend to talk about the initiative and the future. The goal is to ensure all young people across Bear County are ready for our future. The group wants to deliver on this plan by coordinating data, aligning pathways, and promoting policy change that can help unlock the full potential of our young people, our community, and our region. Ryan Lugalia Holland, the CEO, joined us live. We discussed a lot. We talked about the progress that we've seen here in the Alamo City the last few years. We talked about getting students ready for the future, and we talked about what comes next. Here's a little bit of our conversation. Future Ready Bear County will be public re publicly released on April 28th with over 50 of our partner institutions. And it's really a response to the pandemic. So our board in April of 2020 launched an equitable recovery pledge to make sure that the inequities that we had in uh, major outcomes like post-secondary enrollment before the pandemic did not get worse and that we could actually use this crisis as a turning point to create uh, a more inclusive Bear County for all of our young people. So that's what drove it. And the plan has three big pillars, what we consider must haves. You can catch our full discussion right now. Just head to the leading essay section of ksat.com. We have leading essay every Sunday at 8 a.m. So we'll see you next weekend, guys. Back to you. Thank you, Max. 641, about 62 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you how you can protect your children from household items that could be poisonous. Good morning, everyone. 645 and yep, it is raining once again out there at the airport drops on the lens and roads all around, even if it may not be raining right in your backyard right now. Uh, just roads are wet because we have had showers. As you can see, everything's been working its way from south to north throughout the course of the morning. Just a couple of scattered ones out there in portions of the hill country uh, off of 410 on the east side, 1604 heading over towards Seguin, uh, it's 87 over in toward Nixon, down at 181 toward Floresville some of these showers. Everything is on the light side, so it may be to the point now, since it has been raining most of the morning, it's starting to wash some of the oil and dirt off the roads, but that's what made things so slippery, especially earlier this morning, just that fine mist that was falling. And even uh, though there's no rain being picked up, say on the northwest side of town, you may see some of the, it may just be some of that very, very light mist, which is very too, too light, I should say, to uh, be picked up on radar. More rain off to the east, and that's pretty much going to be how we divide things up the, uh, throughout the rest of today. Rain to the east and nothing off to the west. We'll continue with some of these light scattered showers this morning. 60, low 60s, temperatures aren't really going to be going anywhere throughout the rest of the morning. Then we get into midday and we'll start to see even a, of some sunshine. We've got the, the symbols in there for a scattered shower, scattered thunderstorm. Yeah, that still may be possible, but we will have that more of a lull in the action midday. That's not necessarily a good thing because if we see some sunshine, that's just going to help to uh, make the atmosphere that much more unstable. So we get into four o'clock, five, six, and that's when we'll start to see some of these stronger thunderstorms and the potential for severe thunderstorms in parts of the area. And the reason is, and the reason why we're talking about um, kind of two different bad weather scenarios is you've got dry air to the west and very moist air off to the east and it's this dividing line right there and that's going to be the focal point for the uh, shower and thunderstorm development later on today and depending on where that thing kind of sets up shop is where things will really get going later on today but um yeah it's off to the west you can't buy rain off to the east again it's going to be too much and that potential for uh, severe weather here's the uh, computer model and we'll keep again a few scattered showers around somewhat of a break in the action by midday, then things fire up again. So as far as that dry line, that dividing line right there, we're looking at right now, right along 35 and some of these stronger storms, New Braunfels up towards San Marcos. If it decides to kind of 
lull a little bit and stay back further to the west when we get into the, the hottest part of the day, then we would have more of these storms further, maybe even on the west side of 281. But right now it's going to be kind of between 281 and 35 leaning more toward 35 later on today, and that's going to be the situation in through uh, later on this evening. Strongest storms off to the northeast, more numerous scattered variety in and around town. High winds and hail are the biggest threats, and then where there is no rain, we've got the red flag warnings with the very strong winds and the very, very dry conditions, and that's going to be the situation tomorrow as well. Already fire weather watches are posted in for tomorrow for our western counties. So the forecast today, we are going to have just the scattered nuisance rain, wet roads this morning, 72 at noon, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, and then more fire up later on this afternoon, 83 for a high temperature. Again, potential for severe storms pretty much from San Antonio up to the north and east later on today. Then the next few days, as you can see, we've got plenty of sunshine around here and temperatures are going to slowly work their way back up in toward 80 by the weekend. But the problem is dry conditions and breezy conditions, and that's going to uh, have the fire danger stick around for the next couple of days. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you very much. And traffic coverage this morning, it is a mess out there. And one of our biggest problems is if you are headed out of San Antonio towards Seguin and off towards Houston, eastbound I-10 is an absolute mess right now. We've seen heavy traffic on the main lanes and especially on the frontage road due to, we think, one, potentially two accidents. And that's where you're looking live right now. Again, that's in East Bear County and this look at I-35 at Topper Wine, things are moving there, but of course, uh, be careful with uh, the slick roads this morning. That seems to be a big problem throughout the morning. And with my help, we're tracking a couple of other accidents. We're going to keep you updated here in the next 10 minutes and of course during Good Morning America. And this week is National Poison Prevention Week. Experts say children six and under are considered most likely to accidentally ingest something poisonous at home. Yeah, those toxic items can get into can, that kids can get into could be dangerous, even deadly. So how can you be sure your household is safe? David Sears shows us what to watch out for. The headlines were pretty alarming when laundry detergent pods first hit the market. Even now, children are still dying from ingesting them. And that's why it's important to lock up cleaning supplies, medications, and other harmful chemicals. Approximately 40% of the calls to poison centers involve children under the age of six. Cosmetics and personal care products like makeup, toothpaste, hand sanitizer, nail polish remover, and even mouthwashes can be harmful if ingested. Hair relaxers and dyes can cause severe burns in the mouth and esophagus. Most of the time, toddlers and children get into products that are being used or are available to them. Liquid nicotine refills for vapes are deadly. Flavors like bubble gum or cotton candy are very appealing to kids. In 2018, 1,892 children aged five and under were exposed to vaping liquids. If swallowed, vomiting, irregular heartbeat, and seizures can occur. Just a teaspoon of the liquid nicotine can be fatal for a 26-pound toddler. I always tell parents to get down on the level of the child. It lets you see things in a whole new different light compared to when you're looking from a standing position. Some house plants can also be toxic to children and pets. Here's a list of the top 10 that should be kept out of the house if you have children under the age of five. Not only can they cause digestive tract issues, but some can even be fatal if ingested. Keep in mind that it doesn't have to be a liquid chemical that's ingested. Foreign bodies, such as swallowing pennies, Legos, or the silical gel pack commonly found in new purses or shoes, not only choking hazards, but need to continue to be monitored via x-ray after ingestion. Batteries and high-powered magnets can also be very dangerous. David Sears, KSA 12 News. And jot down this number real quick, poison control. Call on 24-7, 1-800-222-1222. And time now, 652 and 62 degrees. A quick look out there with live cam. Of course, those roadways are wet. Be careful. Uh, starting at 62 degrees, we'll be right back. All right, if you are hitting the roads this morning, it is wet out there. Take it easy. And this is 10 eastbound at Loop 1604 on the east side of Bear County, where the eastbound traffic uh, appears to be completely blocked off and onto the access road there. A couple of accidents. You can see all the uh, first responders. And just watch it around town. We've got, you know, a lot of uh, spin outs and things like that because we've had all this light rain around the area. And that is going to continue for the rest of the morning. And then later on this afternoon, we have to be on the lookout for the potential 
for severe weather, especially off to the uh, north and east high winds and hail. So keep it tuned right here. Grab that. KSAT weather app and check out radar and all the different alerts will come right to your phone. We'll keep you updated. That's right. Uh, be careful out there and we'll see you back here at 9.